And hello everyone, this is Super Metroid Fan, and welcome to another Dungeons & Dragons character creation tutorial. So, previously I had gone over basically how to make every member of a party, and now I'm going to be kind of redoing that, and showing you guys what Wizards of the Coast, don't know why I did this, considers a basic party. That time I meant to do it. <laughs> so, a basic party according to Wizards is basically your fighter, your rogue, your wizard, and your cleric. Pretty simple. Four-man party, similar to what I did, but just different spin. Well, really, what I did is a different spin. So, what we're going to be doing here is creating a human two-weapon fighter. Now, why the two-weapon fighter? Well, I personally have created a two-weapon fighter, and they're kind of fun, actually. You turn into a human blunder by end game because you're doing eight attacks per round. All of them are relatively accurate, and they deal pretty good damage if they hit, because there's always a chance you're going to roll bad. So, moving forward with that, uh, how this is going to work is, first off, since we're a human, that's going to be put into our character. Uh, but well, actually, before we do begin, I'm going to get particular with the information you're going to need. You will need at least one six-sided die, but it's convenient to have four of them. You're not just going to have to really worry about it. Uh, you probably should have a d20 if you're going to be playing the game in the first place, but keep it on hand. You never know. I have a few on hand. You know, I have like three more over there uh, because I am a dungeon master, but I decided to keep these two here. You're going to definitely need at least one D10, but you probably should have two if you're going to be playing the game in the first place. It is kind of required. Uh, you should have a D8, you know, in case that's your weapon of choice. You should have a D4, you never know. And you might want a D12. never know uh, if you might want to use something that requires it, but we won't be needing it for hit dice or anything this time, unlike the Barbarian. You're also going to probably want scratch paper, a pencil, and a character sheet. You don't have to be using actual character sheets, you can kind of just track this stuff relatively easily but you know for the purposes of what we're doing here we're going to definitely be wanting the real deal so before we begin since we already know that we're a human i'm going to take our character sheet move this out of the way a little bit there you're still in the way aren't you yeah okay so you can't really see too well but i'll bring it up close for everyone to see character name we'll leave blank player we'll leave blank that's for you people to decide class and level he's going to be a fighter excuse my messy writing Level one. Race H U M A N. Alignment. Now, since alignment is something that DMs are going to be picky on, be it for evil or good party, you can put whatever you want there. Deity doesn't really matter for a fighter. Your size, requirement, medium, age. You can fill that however you want. Keep it within logical reason. Gender. A rule for our games is that people have to play the gender that they are in real life. So you know, no cross players unless you are a crossdresser or whatever then that's your decision house rules for us though since i am a man i must put my gender as m for male my height you can put that down for your own character same thing for the weight the eye color hair color and skin color all really don't matter too much those are blank details you can put down for yourself so now we are at the requirmental part of the ability scores now right here your strength your charisma your wisdom all of this goodness so we're going to cover how exactly we're going to do this so this is why we needed our scratch paper on hand, also for a little bit of thinking later. We're going to take our one or four, uh, really any number, of six-sided dice, and we're going to actually go ahead and roll these bad boys. So when I say roll, what you do is you take all four of them in your hands, jungle them up like this, quite loud, I know, then throw them down onto this. What the hell, that's great. So how this works is you take your four highest, or not your four highest, you look at all four, then you determine which one is the lowest. One of the fours, you remove it. So then you add up the three remaining, which is a five, four, four, which that is a result of four plus four plus five. This is equivalent to 13. That's not bad. A 13 is nice because uh, what you what you ideally want is everything above 10. If it's above 10, you're good because you're not in the negatives. If it's at 10, it's okay. If you're below 10, ooh, that hurts. So how many times are we gonna do this? We're gonna do it one per each ability. There are six abilities, so we're going to roll these four dice, or your one die four times, uh, per each ability. Meaning, if you have just one dice, you roll it four times, remove the lowest, repeat the process five more times. We're going to take these four, and we're going to repeat this process five more times. It's confusing to explain, but easy to understand. Another great roll! See, we have a house rule where we re-roll re -roll ones, but not for ability scores, which we don't even roll for those. We use predetermined numbers. So here we have a 9 and a 6, that makes it 15. So J 
just so I know exactly why I have these numbers, I'm putting it down. You don't have to do this. This is just simply how I'm doing it. I've, these characters that I've been creating, you know, they've been getting pretty lucky. The rolls have all been relatively good. Uh, that's okay, because as long as it's three and above for the most part, you know, that doesn't mean it's a bad roll. Uh, so it's a four, four, three. So four, eight, twelve. Not twelve, eleven, right? Am I thinking wrong? No, it's eleven. That's okay. That's probably going to be one of our weaker scores. Unless I roll really bad here, you know? Knocking on wood. Uh, nice. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. I must say so myself. That is six and five and three. That totals out to a 14. Finally, an even number. And we have two more to roll. So come on, give us something good. Oh, that's a kind of a bad one because we got that one too. But it's for a 12 total, so I guess that makes up for it. And uh, if your scores are not ideal for the most part, you can simply re-roll. It's not too big a deal. Ooh, there's our bad one. Oh no, this isn't even that bad either. This is another 11. Oh jeez. Alright, 3 plus 3 plus that 5. Another 11. Okay, so... This fighter here, he's doing relatively okay for stats. You know, he doesn't have anything negative. We're lucky again. Uh, I do believe there was at least one character that got negative rolls, and that was kind of, eh, but whatever. For the most part, I mean, statistically speaking, you're rolling four dice, and if three is the midpoint, then three times three, that's nine. So you, you're, you're statistically speaking, you're getting around a ten. You know, if you get below it, that's kind of the rarer event, actually. The rare wrist event is rolling all sixes, which we didn't do on this character, but I think we did do on one character before. So, since we're doing a two-weapon fighter, our main focuses, and I say focuses for a clear reason, are strength and dexterity. Why are there multiple focuses on this character? Very clearly, a two-weapon fighter requires a high dexterity to begin the build and to be able to advance it. Strength is the second requirement because it allows them to carry their two weapons and deal the damage. If you don't have a high enough strength, then you're not dealing enough damage and you may as well just focus on two-handing a weapon because you're low strength. If you don't have a high enough dex, you can't advance the build. So you're kind of at a standpoint. So we're lucky we have enough dexterity to be able to cover this because 15 is the minimum requirement. We have to put that 15 right here in dexterity. As for our other scores, Plain and simple, we're putting the 14 into strength. We're still getting a plus 2 to both of these, and I'll explain that again in a little bit. Uh, now we have a 13 and two 11s. What should we do with those? Oh, we, I'm sorry, we have a 12, 11, 11, 13. So what should we do with these? Well, you're going to want to put something better into Constitution, so we get a little bonus. And then between Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma, that's kind of your personal choice. Higher Intelligence, more, more, more skill points. Higher Wisdom... You're not as street dumb. Higher charisma, use your time talking with people. Now, since really only one of these is going to give a bonus, I'm actually going to put it into intelligence and leave the 11s in wisdom as charisma. So, our, our two weapon fighter here, he's kind of weak for a party member because he's, he doesn't have anything bonus to wisdom or charisma, but he's got a little bit of strength and dex. So, if you wanted to re roll at this point, I'd understand. You can follow this and you can just add up the bonus numbers. So, if you're curious how this whole ability shebang here works, which I should probably get up close to explain, so I heard bumping the mic again, uh, really how that whole thing right there works is plain and simple. 10 is considered your base when it comes to uh, getting your ability points. So, with a 10, you get a zero bonus. That's good because it's not bad and not really good at the same time. So, you, you, don't, you don't get a negative, you don't get a positive. So, it's like your neutral point. Uh, for every two ability score above 10, you get a plus one. So to find out a score, you take it, subtract 10, divide by two. Our 15, subtract 10 to five, divide by two, 2.5. You always, well, you mostly always round down. In this circumstance, it is. There's very rarely an occasion where you round up. Um, and that 2.5 becomes a two. So you get a plus two. Simple, roughly. So at this point, uh, you can go ahead and fill in any of your missing blanks, really, on you know your stats. Uh, this would take quite some time, and uh, really, I'm going to take care of that in a little bit. Next, we're going to go to our hit points. Since we've already decided that we're a fighter, we would take 1d10 
roll it, add our constitution modifier, and that's our hit points. But at first level, you always take max, so we get a free 10 plus our one con. That makes it an 11 hit point. Uh, real quick, I'm going to put in my dexterity modifier here because I'm going to need that uh, initiative modifier, dexterity. I'm just going to quickly fill these in while I'm trying to think. So what's the next most important part of building a fighter? Well, plain and simply. Uh, it's it's kind of difficult to be able to explain it to new players of the game, but in the end, it's going to wind up probably being the same. How it works is you want to focus on being able to build up your extra strikes. Now, the reason I say extra strikes is because not everybody can two-hand efficiently. In D&D, any player can pick up two weapons and use them in both hands to attack. There is a big penalty for this, though. You get a minus six bonus to your main hand. That means your accuracy goes down by six, and your offhand takes a minus ten. That means the accuracy of your offhand goes down by ten. At early game, with our plus two strength and our one base attack, we have a three. Which means, if we're using two-handed weapons, or two two-handed weapons without a feat, we would be rolling with the main hand for minus three, and an offhand with a minus seven. That's not going to hit really anything, to be honest. So for that reason, we're not going to be too concerned with this. Uh, we will be wearing light armor, though, so we will be keeping our human 30-foot speed, and uh, we won't be, you know, like, weighing ourselves down or anything. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the book here. The book's really not going to be explaining too much, but I'm just going to quickly flip to the fighter section to give me a little bit of help here. Because I need to check up one little thing really quick. All right, there's your good old buddy fighter. Can't really see him. Let me, let me put him in frame for you all. Yeah, there's your good old dwarf fighter right there. You guys like that? I hope you like that. He's a cool guy. He's a fighter. Okay, and then here's your, here's your human fighter too. Pretty cool guy. Okay, so. Uh, how this is going to work now that we have our everything set. We get a plus one to our base attack bonus. There we go. And of course, there we go. Okay, so you get a plus one to your base attack, you get a plus two to your fortitude save, and as a special, you get a bonus feat. How does the bonus feat work? Well, pretty, pretty simple actually. A bonus feat is literally what it seems. From the feat table, there are certain feats that you can take, uh, specifically if you have the book, any feat that has a number one next to it qualifies as a feat that you can take as your extra fighter feat. Now, how exactly does the fighter feat work? Well, basically, Starting from second level and up, every even level, you get to take an additional feat. Now, this is amazing because usually you have to wait for a multiple of three to get a feat, which is kind of crazy, but that's neither here nor there. So, as a human, we get one bonus feat for free from the whole table. We get our fighter feat for being a fighter from the fighter selection. Excuse me. And we also get our first level feat, which allows us to take anything again. So, what are we going to do? Well, we have the 15 requirement dexterity to be able to get two weapon fighting. We are also going to get two weapon defense because we will have two weapon fighting and really out of all of these there's not too much that we're going to be needing with the two weapon fighting style. So that's going to be our two picks and uh, how, it's, how the two weapon defense is going to work is will we have our offhand melee weapon we get a plus one bonus AC to the shield. So I'm going to put that in because we will be taking that. Now with our, re with our um, not with our fighter feet or human feet, with our regular feet, what should we get? Well, it's a tough call. I mean, if you want to and you're going to be using, you know, two light weapons or a light and a medium weapon, you could take a weapon focus so that way you can improve your accuracy with it. But it's not needed. Now if you're going to be using the exact same weapon in both hands, like two short swords, I do actually recommend weapon finesse. How weapon finesse works is... Um, well, only light melee weapons get this, so be careful of that. But you can use your dexterity as your accuracy rather than your strength. Your strength is still applied for damage, but your dexterity is for the accuracy, which is a really awesome bonus, actually. Uh, because since you're going to be focusing on dexterity, especially with this build, it could be useful. So, since we got these rolls in particular, I think we might want to think weapon finesse. But at the same time, early game, improving our initiative with, early, with uh, improved initiative is nice. You know, so it's a tough call. You can pick either one you want. Improved initiative will give you a, uh, what is it, a plus four or a plus three to um, getting the first attack. Da, da, da. I have to check this. I haven't 
I actually haven't been playing D&D in quite some time. <laughs> uh, improved initiative. Improved initiative. Where is it? Like, I'm totally lost right now. Usually, I usually have this, like, stuff memorized where exactly everything is. Da -da 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 -da. Improved initiative. Counterspell critical initiative. Plus four. Yeah, so we would, so that, with this build, we get a plus six to get in that first combat. Uh, it's kind of nice, but at the same time, you know, making sure that we're going to hit stuff late game. I think it's worth it for the setup. I mean, granted, we will we will be able to pick up another fighter feat next level. So, you know, since Weapon Finesse qualifies for that, maybe we could do that. But uh, I think we'll wind up picking um, other feats. You know, it's up to you guys to choose, really, how these feats work. Uh, in my opinion, you probably should go with what I'm doing here. Oh, yeah, the paper's a little messed up. So, for our first feat, uh, I'm going to mark that with a H U for human. So the human feat, we are taking to a weapon fight. And my my writing is really messy because I haven't been writing in a while either. Level one feat, we are going to be taking uh, two weapon defense. And then for our first level fighter feat, which I'm marking all these with numbers, and you guys will see when I show you all the completed sheet. Uh, for our first special ability, we will be taking down, what was it? Uh, oh, right, improved, well, what did I say it was? Oh yeah, we're gonna go with weapon, no, we're going with improved initiative. Now this is just plain and simple. I took human because that's what I took when I first started. It's a very easy to manage race, you know, you don't have any big problems going on or anything, etc. So, um, since we have our improved intelligence, we do get to pick out another language. And, uh, you know, plain and simple, humans start with common, so we do get common right off the bat, which that's what basically everything winds up speaking. But uh, I think something that you guys can decide on your own is what language. Uh, for me personally, I like to take Draconic, so then my, uh, my character and the magic user can have interesting conversations that no one else can see. Plus, Draconic is relatively most used early game. Uh, other languages include such things as uh, Infernal, Undercommon, uh, Dwarven, Orcish, uh, Elvish, etc. So I think probably what the best bet, because you probably will have a magic user with you, is to take Draconic. Does this mean you can speak the language of dragons? Yes. Can you do spells? No. Not unless it's a magic item. Plain and simple. So this whole section is completely useless to us again. Uh, all right, so now that that has been covered, really quickly, just uh, gotta fill this in with two zero zero three two zero bonus. Okay, that's nice and easy. Uh, we haven't decided on anything else for the most part here. All right, so now that we've picked out our few feats, it's time to do what everybody fears. This whole big shebang right here, the skills. Yes, I know, everyone is afraid of this specific segment because it looks like a lot, but I'm gonna break it down for you. It's gonna be nice and easy. You'll understand everything when we're done here, okay? So, how do skills work? Plain and simple, this is basically how you're gonna interact with the world, if you didn't know. Skills are not that big of a deal. Everyone can chill out when they see this list because there's a lot here but entry game players don't need to worry about it. It's pretty simple, actually. How a skill works is uh, you get specific ones from the start of the game. So for the fighter, we get climb. We get very few, actually. The fighter is one of the very few uh, skills. You know, they don't have a lot of skills, but they have, you know, all those really awesome feats going on for them. So you get a little variation. We, we have some of the ones that the uh, Barbarian does, but we kind of have less at the same time. So, if you, if you built Barbarians, you can build Fighters. They're, they're pretty similar. So, you get Climb, Craft, Handle Animal, Intimidate, Jump, and Ride. How does this work? Well, plain and simple. Climb is basically to do extreme levels of climbing. Craft is to, do, is to craft something of an art, like wood making, weapon smithing, trap making, etc. Handle Animal trying to calm down, per se, a horse when it's scared from battle, intimidate, pretty easy to understand, and jump. It's it, That's like extreme jumping. There's also ride, which I don't really use much in my campaigns. Uh, so these black boxes next to these, 
uh, plain and simple. It means you can use the skill without putting any uh, skill points in. So anybody can appraise, balance, bluff. Yeah, appraise, balance, bluff, climb, concentrate, craft, uh, be diplomatic, disguise themselves, try to escape something, forge a signature, gather information, heal someone for damage. Not very well, though. Uh, try to hide, intimidate somebody, jump. They can try and listen. They can try and move silently. They can try to ride something. They can try to search for something. They can try and tell if someone's trying to do something. They can try and see something. They can try and survive in the wild. They can try and swim against a strong current. And also, they can use rope. All of those skills are what everybody can use. Really, the only thing that's unique for us is we can handle animals well. Simple. So, uh, when it comes to skill points, it's easy. The fighter gets two plus their intelligence multiplied by four at first level. So, let's put it down. Here's the formula here. And I'm sorry I have really bad handwriting, but uh, it's pretty simple to understand, I think, if you can figure it out. <laughs> God, that's sloppy. And then as a human, we get an additional plus one. So, break it down. That means this is 2 plus 0, because we don't have an intelligent modifier, multiplied by 4, then plus 1. See? In total, what does that mean we get? Well, this is 2 times 4, that's 8, plus 1, that's 9. We get 9 points. Easy. So how do the points work, really? Well... When it comes to skills, there's class skills and cross class. These ones that I have marked right here with my pencil off to the side, these are your class skills. These are the ones that I have listed that fighters can do. Pretty simple, actually, because there's so few. At maximum, how a skill works is you can put your, your personal level plus three. So, as a level one, you can put up to four points in. Does that mean that that's the modifier? No, because each score is actually affected by one of your ability modifiers. See, uh, if I can get up close here, focus, okay, focus, focus on the shaky paper. There we go. See how it says like dex, charisma, strength, constitution, intelligence? Uh, basically, within these three little lines, this, uh, this one right here, the very first one, that's where you would put your actual skill modifier. So, just for simplification reasons, our actual skills, so like climb, we would put our strength bonus into which is a 2. For craft, our intelligence, a 0. Handle animal, a charisma, which is a 0. Our intimidate, charisma. Our jump, our strength. Our ride, our dexterity. See? Nice and easy. So now, if you're following along exactly like me, you should have your sheet shut up, set up just like this. Nice and easy, nothing difficult, nothing hard to understand there. So how are we going to go forward into the skills? Well, now we're going to actually decide where our 9 points get allocated or used. So, what's really important in terms of skill? Well, since craft has so many different options, and I don't even see really too much use in it for a fighter, I don't say put any points into craft. You should really ignore it for the most part. Unless you have extra skill points because you had a higher intelligence roll than me or something, but that's, that's your character, not mine. What's actually important? Well, remember how I said you can put up to four points into a class skill? That would be this really long second one right here. You know, the... The one where it says uh, ranks, yeah, that's this, that's where you put your points. You can put points into any skill you like, you know. But here's the difference: if it's not marked like these little ones are right here, then it means you have to spend two points to get one rank. Easy. So usually people try and focus on their class ones, and then when they fill up, they go to other ones. But because the fighter doesn't have that many, I actually do suggest doing a little bit of cross-classing right off the bat. So in particular, I suggest you try and put points into listen, spot, and search. These three can be used by any DM in many different circumstances. Search can help you find items that you need for a quest. Listen can help you before an encounter, and the same thing with spot. These are very important. Now, since we have low wisdom, but we have a better intelligence, I'm not going to really worry about search, but I am going to put one rank into spot. That's going to drop our 9 to a 7. Now, if you're curious how many you can put into a cross class, it's your the number you can put into a class skill divided by 2 rounded down. So since we can put up to 4 into a class skill, we can put half of that rounded down. Since there's no half, 
just two. We can put up two points into any cross class skill. Basic to understand, not that hard, I hope. So, back to the class skills. We have seven points, and we can use up to four per skill. Most important is our Intimidate. We can use this to completely debunk fights entirely and whatnot, so we're going to put a four into there. That leaves us with three extra points. Our one sole point, I don't really know where to put. I suppose probably the best bet would be Handle Animal. And then our other cross-class skill, or our other two ranks, I'm going to put into Listen. So that way we get a plus one to listen and spot checks. Simple. So that breaks up uh, everything here. I'm going to quickly toss up the numbers. Done. Now this box is where the total modifier would be. And since you don't have ranks in anything else, you basically put your ability modifier in there for now. But just so it doesn't get all messy, we're just going to go nice and easy. We're going to, anything that has a modifier to it, we're going to put stuff in here. There we go. So why is there a distinction between class skills and cross class? Well, so it's cheaper for some classes to use skills. Plain and simple. All right, so here we go. This is it, really. You know, nothing, nothing too difficult to understand there. Just copy what I put down. We should be all set. So now that, now that that's uh, taken care of. All right, so that covers the easy stuff for how to set up your character. Now, the next bit would be uh, covering your gear and stuff. Now, since none of the abilities that I've picked up are specific to weapons, there's a few different ways that we can use two-weapon fighting. We can use it with a light and medium weapon. We can use it with two lights, etc. Now, because of our low rolls, our best bet, actually, should probably be using two light weapons. Now, out of all light weapons, what is a good bet? Well, that's actually up to your opinion. You know, there are many different light weapons, but it's kind of difficult to pick one. And specifically by light, it, it, it can be, uh, you, you since we don't have an extra fee for an exotic weapon, you can't pick exotic one-handed light weapons. You can only pick melee and simple ones. So really, our choices are between dagger, dagger punching, I'm going to get up close so you can actually read this ink, gauntlet spike, oh, it doesn't make any sense, a light mace, a sickle. And then we also have over here, throwing axes, light hammer, hand axe, kickery, a light pick, a sap, and then different forms of shields. So using two shields is kind of redundant, and you can't really do it. So we're actually, uh, to be specific here, what's probably the best weapon to pick? Hmm. You know, that's kind of tough. We're actually going to have to let our money decide for us on this one. Yes, that's right. You don't have a predetermined amount of money to get your stuff unless your DM says otherwise. And also, for everything I'm doing here, make sure you check with your DM after you've completed this. They can help you fix anything you're doing wrong. How much money does a fighter get? Well, pretty simple here. If we go and skip around, there's a little table right here that tells you how much starting gold every class gets. So you can see the fighter is 6 four-sided die multiplied by 10 with an average of 150. So you can either take that average or you can actually roll 6 four-sided die, which we will be doing, and then multiplying it by 10. So we're going to just roll this guy six times. That's a three. That's a three. That's a one. I'm actually going to write this down. I don't mess up. There's a three again. There's a two. Two. I don't know why I said it like that. And then the last one is a four. That's actually... Pretty good. So this would total out 2, 6, 7, 10, 12, 16, times 10, 160 gold. Bam, bam, bam. Nice and easy. So if you're following along with me, that means you have 160 gold to spend. Remember, not everything's going to go into your actual weapons and your gear for protection. There are resources you're going to need when you're going into battle. That will help you stay alive. So, what are we going to pick? This is still a tough decision. Um, a dagger would be a cool choice. You know, you're, you're only doing uh, up to six damage based on this character. But, you know, nice, easy, critical. A punching dagger would be nice because it does have, if you do manage to roll that natural 20, you can do triple the damage, which up to six times three, six, 12, 18 damage, that's going to kill somebody really hard early game. A light mace would be nice. 
a d6, but it's a little harder to crit. Uh, a throwing axe can be thrown, which is the convenience, but you might want to carry more if you're going to do that. A light hammer, you can throw that as well, too, according to the book, but eh. Hand axe, uh, d6, triple critical, that's nice. A kickery, that seems kind of nice, actually. You know, you have a very high critical range. Rolling an 18 to 20 can give you a possible. And then the only downside is you roll d4. Hmm. This is a tough decision. So how it really boils down to is which of these two do you want to use for damage with this build? Do you want to use your six-sided die or your four-sided die? Hmm. You know, I'm not... I'm not too big of a fan of four-sided dice. They're, they're, they don't roll very much, so they're kind of iffy. So we're going to pick something with a d6 as its damage roller. And in particular, I think what's going to be a good choice for us is a short sword. This is going to cost 10 gold pieces a pop, but it has a 19 to 20 critical range, meaning it's a lot easier actually to deal damage out with it than other weapons that we could get for cheaper. So since it's uh, just both hands, you know, we just write it down here in our attack section, which uh, actually, if you'll give me a moment, I want to see if I can... Ah, oh, I guess I can. This isn't really much. Oh boy, okay. So hang on, we're going to get really messy for a second. Oh boy. There we go. Okay, so right here in your attacks, you're going to want to write up your short sword. No, that's not close enough. Uh, but there we go. That's close enough. So our attack bonus of this is... Uh, did we get weapon finesse? No, we got improved initiative. So we're going to be putting our strength modifier plus our base attack. That is a total of three. The damage, one, d6, plus two. Critical, 19 to 20 times two. Range, null, type, slash. Oh, piercing. My bad. Notes, this is going to be our main hand. And then just really repeat this, and the difference is that uh, this is going to be noted as off hand. That's, that's really all there is to that. You know, basically you just fill in the blanks with the exact same stuff. Why is it so blurry? I just realized that. That's why, oh god, it's like, <laughs> this thing does not like you close it up close. Uh, do you see? Do you see? Do you see? Focus. Focus. Okay, I guess it doesn't want to focus. <laughs> uh, Alright, so really just a quick fill in here. And then you'll be all set on your attacks. So, there you go. That covers your um, attacks. And also, uh, if you didn't already do it, you know, here's how you would fill in uh, really every other part. It's really messy to see, but this is a 2, this is a 1, 1, 3, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 3. And of course, the ability scores, our armor class here, which we're actually about to cover. So since we have our 160 gold here, now we're going to be losing 10 gold per each of the sort swords. So we're going to drop out a 20 gold, bring us to 140 gold. Now, again, we're not going to use all of this on our armor because we can't use a shield. Uh, but we will be considering that 140 in total amongst all of these different armor choices. So when it comes to your armor, it's actually kind of important to decide. Now I already thought that the best bet would be light armor. This is because light armor does not impede a character's uh, ability to move and allows them to be able to, you know, still escape from combat or move fast in it. Now since we are the little blender that could, so to speak, we're actually going to want to focus on this light armor stuff in particular because it provides us a good bonus. Hey, focus. Focus. Are you, are you down here? Down here? Down here? Okay, my thumb is in the way. Oh, okay, you're being very trippy. 
space, but how I'm holding this. There we go. Okay, so really, uh, we could drop ourselves down all the 100 gold to get this chain shirt and get a plus four and stuff. Um, you know, I don't really know, though. If you want to take the studded leather, you know, it's one less on your uh, accuracy, and with our low decks, you know, the chain shirt's kind of looking like a better option right now. Plain and simple. You know, you know what I mean? Because, like, it will, we'll only have 40 gold, but we don't really need to focus on a lot of supplies and stuff. So that's how we're going to do this. We're going to get the chain shirt. That's going to bring us up to plus 4 bonus, and we would add our decks, our armor, and the natural 10 that people get when they, whenever they're playing, and also the one offhand shield bonus. Don't forget that we had that. So that brings us up to a 17 armor class. That's pretty good, actually. We're matching with a lot of people. Uh, for your touch armor, it's going to be minus your shield and minus your uh, armor. It's going to be just, well, yeah, it's going to be just your dexterity along with uh, size, natural, deflection, and misc. Uh, touch means you lose your armor and shield. Flat-footed, you lose your dex. So, for flat-footed, we have a 15, and for touch, we have a 12. So, that, that's roughly how I think it should work. I'm not the best at <laughs> remembering this. But uh, do remember that if you if you don't have your offhand weapon, you don't actually have the shield bonus. So keep that in mind. You always want to keep your offhand weapon ready to be pulled out. Okay. So now to cover this little bit right here, our gear. So our armor protective item, that is a chain shirt. Plain and simple. Type light. AC bonus is a plus four. Max dex bonus is a plus four. Special properties, null. Weight, I think it was 25 pounds? 25 pounds. Speed, 30 foot. Woo! Spell failure. Doesn't matter, but if you want to put it down, it is a 20% chance. And there is a minus 2 check penalty. So how is that check penalty going to apply? Well, if we quickly go back to the skills. Uh, any skill that has a little apostrophe mark here. It won't have difficulty C, but if you have your own character sheet, you can. Uh, it denotes that you get a minus based on your armor so what gets that negative well our climb gets this minus two which brings it down to a zero and then also our nothing else gets it <laughs> so it didn't it didn't really matter to get that too much you know it's something that people pick up on really easily that's about it so as for our other possessions we're putting down our pre-existing short swords we have two of them they weigh how much was it a pop gotta look right here uh do, 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 do. two pounds really that's all oh, that's not much so two pounds each so we just put down two i'll bring it to a four and then chain shirt one that weighs 25 so right now we're looking at only 29 pounds of encumbrance, which I'll get into that once we finish procuring our items of choice. So now for our goods and services kind of deal. So what does the basic adventurer want? Pretty simple stuff actually. Here in the adventuring gear you'll find everything you really need. Uh, everything that you should get includes a empty backpack, a bedroll, uh, as a fighter, well, you definitely need a better rolling backpack all the time. But as a fighter, you're also going to want uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, a flint and steel. Probably you don't need to get that. It's just nice to have. And torches. And then also rations. That's it. Just torches, rations, at least one torch, that is. Uh, definitely, definitely the rations. Uh, the bedroll, the water skin, and the backpack. So how does all that add up? Well, water skin is one gold piece itself, so that's one. The backpack is two gold pieces, so that's two to add to that, making it three. The bedroll is a silver, and a silver is a tenth, so that means it's like ten cents, so it's a point one. Uh, and then the, where else is that? Flint and steel is one gold, so that's another one. So add it all up, you get four points. These are our total costs so far. 
gold and silver. I'm pretty good at calculating this, it's not that hard. Uh, now, did I get the water skin? Yeah, I got the water skin. Okay. Uh, you could get soap. It's always funny to have soap. So, you know what, we're gonna grab some soap. No reason. Just like to have soap on hand. So, just following along, 4.6. Because we have soap now. I'm gonna be marking this down in a second. Uh, where is that torch? That's a copper. That's, that's a penny a pop. So, we'll get, you know, uh, oh, they're, they're a pound each. Okay, so we don't want to get too many. So we'll get we'll get five torches. Nice and easy. So, oopsie. Sorry about that, everybody. Total cost so far. You'll, you don't understand what I'm doing at all. Uh, clothing, we do default come with some clothes. So we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so now. Food, drink, and lodging. This is where it matters. Meals per day. Oh, that's, that's logging, actually. We don't need that, specifically. Uh, huh. I thought it was around here somewhere. Wasn't it specifically marked as rations? That's what I thought. Hang on, I gotta check real quick. Oh, yeah. They're over here. Rations on the trail per day. Five silver apiece. Which means they're half of a gold piece. So, for every two that you get, it's a gold piece. Uh, we have 40 gold. And how much is each of them? Well, actually, I should probably write up the weight of everything. So, four pounds on that water skin. Uh, and then the, the, the backpack. Two pounds. The bedroll. Five pounds. The flint and steel is null. Uh, what else did I get? I should, I should really be writing this on the character sheet instead. Oh, I'm silly. Silly, silly me. Gotta move everything now. Okay. So, we have... Back. Pack. Water skin. Uh, after the water skin would be bed roll. So, this is... Four pounds for the water skin. Two pounds of backpack. Five pounds of bed roll. Uh, flint and steel. Again, sorry, sorry for my terrible handwriting. What are you gonna do? You know. Oh no, I have one. Not that much. Jesus, that's a lot of weight to encumber so early. Okay, so where was the other five? Oh, right. So, and these are per pound. So, I'm just gonna put LB because that means pound. Uh, so, if it's a pound of soap, that means it should be one pound. Doi. There we go. Okay, that covers the soap. Uh, and then torches. How many was it that I grabbed? Was it five? Yes. So, that, they're, they're a pound each, so that would bring it to five pounds. Awesome. Okay, so now for the rations. So, oh, hello. We're not 5.1 gold spent. We are at 4.65 gold spent. Okay, so, now, how much food does a player want to take with them? That differs. You know, usually you want to ask your uh, dungeon master how many rations your character should come pre-equipped with. For us, we're going to want two weeks worth. So that's 5 multiplied by 14 for the cost. Uh, real quick math, that would be 50. Or would it be 50? Hang on, no. 20 plus 5 plus 50. 70. Yeah, so that'd be 70 gold. I mean, not 70 gold. Jesus, what's wrong with me? Um, no, wait a minute. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Because they are half of a gold piece of pop so we don't even have that much all right so if we're at 40 gold pieces and we've just lost 4.6 uh that would bring us down oh 4.65 gold i'm sorry that would bring us down to do 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 35.35 gold <laughs> okay so 
Now that we know that a ration is equivalent to half of a gold piece, basically, uh, we can afford... No, wait, it'd be seven gold pieces. Yeah, so it's only seven gold pieces. So 35 minus seven, that would be 28, I think. Yeah, 28. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take two weeks worth of rations. 14 rations. How many pounds is one ration at a time? Do 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 do. One pound of pop. So that's 14 pounds of food, basically. Our money we have on our person. Five copper, three silver, and twenty-eight gold pieces. Plenty for starting gear. So if you can understand this at all, focus. Focus on the shaky paper. There you go. We have two short swords, two of them each are two pounds at pop. We have one chain shirt that is twenty-five pounds for its one pop. We have one backpack that is two pounds. One water skin that is four pounds. We have one bedroll that is five pounds. We have one flint and steel that is no weight to worry about. We have one soap that is one pound. We have five torches, one pound of pop. Not five total. We have 14 rations, each weighing one pound. Adjusting that. So, our total weight, 10 plus the 14, that is already 24, plus an additional five, that is 29. 25 plus 29, that is 54. 54 plus two, 56, plus this other four right here, that's 50, uh, not 50, that is 60. Then 65. 61 pounds or 66 pounds so how do you calculate your load of weight that you can carry well if you have a player's handbook there is a relatively handy oh i keep hitting everything way past the combat section way past way past it come on work with me book work with me work with me okay Carrying capacity. It's relatively simple. There's actually this very handy chart available for everyone's viewing pleasure. There you go. Be nice and simple. Not that easy to read for you all, but let me get up close. Based on your strength score, this is how much you could actually carry if you had this high of a score in real life. So with our 13, we can carry 50 or... L oh, I have overdone it. Oh God, do we have a 13? No, we have a 14. Okay. <laughs> uh, we, I've still overdone it a little bit. Because I'm, I'm used to having a higher score. So with our 14, we can only carry up to 58 pounds. Uh, unfortunately, being at this 68, that's not good. Because when you're uh, overweighted, well, you're going to start having some problems. Specifically, your speed drops and a couple other things. I knew there was something I should have been looking out for, but I wasn't thinking of it. So now we're going to have to deal with fixing this and giving ourselves the gold back. Um, let's see, where is it? So 116 maximum for your medium load, 117 to 175 for your heaviest load. You can lift up to 175 pounds. You can lift off the ground. Oh god, the math. Uh, 175 multiplied by 2. Think, self. Think. Okay, that's 200, 75 multiplied by 2 is 150, right, right, right? Yes, 150. So 150 plus 200, 350. And then 5 times, well, 350 plus 350, that's 700 plus an additional 175, that's 875 pounds we can push or drag at maximum force. That's a lot of weight that we potentially can be using. Okay, so to drop this, we're going to basically... We're going to drop one torch. Right, that's going to give us one gold back. Now, for the rations, we can't carry two weeks worth because we're at 65 pounds. We have to drop enough to be at 58. We have to drop a total of seven pounds, meaning we have to drop one week's worth of rations. So that brings us to the precise light load of 58, which removes the encumbrance, which is good. And we can't switch our scores either because we need that high dex or else we wouldn't be in this thing in the first place. So, uh, seven is, uh, how many, so that's times 0.5, seven times 0.5, um, half of seven is 3.5. So we get, 
five silverback, meaning we're at eight, and we get three gold, meaning we're at 32. Okay, final. Adjust to this, because I boobed up. I'm sorry for that. Very difficult to see, but, oh, okay, I just, yeah, I just did that. <laughs> oh, I'm horrible today, I feel so bad. My writing is completely off and everything, because I haven't been writing whatsoever, but, yep, there we go. Congratulations, everyone, you have officially created yourself a fighter. So, that was fun, and I thank you all for joining me through with this. It's been quite some time since I got to make a character sheet, but, uh, yeah. So, before I go, I will let everyone get a last close-up of the fighter so that way in case you didn't get any of the detailed stats down till now you're good to go so uh, yeah it's been fun I miss doing these for you guys oh that should be a, oh, whatever that's fine and uh, you know I hope that I get to do more of this for you guys uh, hopefully better I was gonna do more today but because my hands are so shaky for whatever reason I really don't even know why uh, I'm going to have to postpone that till a later date. But hey, at least you guys will finally be getting your hands on some more of this D&D based content. I know you guys love it a lot, and uh, it really shines through. And I'm glad that I have so many people that get to enjoy D&D with me. And uh, hopefully soon, you know, I'm actually going to be doing something kind of special. Uh, if, you, if you guys happen to know gaming as usual, it's a group channel that I work at. Uh, I've been trying to convince everyone to play D&D. I don't know if I can ever get through them, but maybe someday in the near future I can. And maybe Matthew will be around to play with us, too. That could be quite fun. Uh, I don't know if we ever will, but hey, it'll be fun if we do. So thank you all so much for watching. I've been Super Metroid Fan, and hopefully this D&D tutorial proved to be uh, helpful for you. And I'm sorry if it didn't. Please, any comments that you'd like to have, put them down in the comment section below. Uh, if you enjoyed it, a like is very appreciated, and the same thing for dislikes if you didn't enjoy this. In any case, I am pretty freaking hot right now because I haven't had my air conditioning on in quite some time and this room heats up a lot. So I'm going to have to go now. But uh, yeah, I hope you all had a great time watching this video. Until next time, bye bye everybody.